Hello and welcome to Tights TV, uh, Neil, and I've also got Tom on. Uh, so, Tom, great to have you back on, mate. Now then, Neil, plenty uh, as ever. Uh, oh, not a, not a problem. Uh, you've just been on about it off air. Uh, you know, last time, you, you know, you were on, things were starting to be un unveiled and the room was going about, but now we've got, uh, seems to be picking up pace, uh, Michael Duff is fan. Uh, Tom, what, what's your take on him? Yeah, well, we had um, we had plenty of chat. Um, we had plenty of chat about who might be possibles, and I think that me and you both said that we were worn up short term, duff long, -term. Um, and I'm I'm absolutely delighted with it that he's that that we've managed to get him to be honest. And the more I read about his past, the more I, uh, I listen to him, um, more excited I am to be honest. Uh, just a proper, it's going to sound like a cliche this, but a proper football bloke. Like you know, he's he's experienced it at all levels. Um, is to me that kind of that kind of start as a manager where you you league two, league one. That it's it's invaluable because he's had su all such experience at such a young age for a manager, um, and he's seen a lot of clubs, a lot of teams, a lot of players, a lot of different styles of football. Um, which, like I said, invaluable going forward because. Uh, we, we need we needed somebody who had good football knowledge. Yeah. We needed we needed somebody who had good knowledge of that kind of um, set up league two, league one, um, and above. And and we've managed to go and get it. And do you know what? I've seen a lot of people um, getting on the backs of the club and saying that we should be doing this and we should be doing that. And it needs to be quicker. It needs to be that. And I'm one of them who said. Look, it'd be great if we could have announced somebody and we could have done this. These things take time. There's so many things involved. There's mm. families involved. There's uh, there's real life involved as well, not just football. It's not just championship manager. It's not we, we approach this person and they come in. We've, they've got to go through due process and this, that and the other. And fair play to Khaled and whoever else has been involved um, in getting it over the line. Because to me, that's the best person available at that time. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> just going back to press uh, conference when we were there and he came at Rome, you just felt that presence, that awe about him. He knew what he wanted to do. He's very self-motivated. Uh, uh, he's got a clear understanding of what he wants to do, what he wants to achieve. And if it made a few people laugh. I think he got asked a question. I forgot who it was. It might have been from Radio Sheffield or uh, Yorkshire Post when we said, have you got any guarantees about any reassurances about any money for transfer fund. He went, the only thing what's reassuring in football is like sack. And it was like a bit of a bit of a light out of tech. But going back to what you said, Vieta Tom, he also alluded to that. He said, you know, on back of that, if it did happen, we got sack, he'd go straight back down to Cheltenham because he sees it as two clubs, Burnley and Cheltenham. Yeah. And for me, yeah, it's a big upheaval. It took the time. Um, he signed a three-year contract. So it's not as if it's like a one-year with an option. It's a free contract. He wants to, you know, come across and he treats it a bit like a Burnley as in the, the community. And this, you know, we're not we're not going to have millions and millions to spend, but what we will have is a team of players that are wanting to, and he said it time and time again, you probably heard it as soon as he said, sweat on shirts. He's wanting back work ethic. And I thought it's refreshing to hear because I don't think us as fans have heard that for. Well, well, we certainly didn't hear it last year, did we? Under uh, them two uh, temporary coaches, I call them. Yeah. It'd be refreshing for someone to come in. Like I said, he knows the leagues, he knows the players, and I think it's like that bit of self-belief, us as fans, and it's like, do you know what? I, I can see it going forward, slowly but surely, but we can, I can see it start momentum start to go forward. Yeah, and I think um, the other thing with... The other thing that we've um, gone for with with Duff is that we've gone for um, somebody who wants to be part of a project, which we are now. Mm. We've got to think of it like that. We've got to think of it long term. We've got to think that we we need to start start again in many ways. Um, and I actually do believe that we're probably as good a prospect as um, Blackpool. Um, or a team like that, because actually we're quite a we're quite a decent sized club in League One, and also we've got players that are still on board um, 
who are decent players. Uh, and if you back yourself like Duff does, mm. um, I would think that the challenge of getting us out of League One is probably better than um, trying to keep Blackpool up because I think that's what he'd be doing if he went to Blackpool. Yeah. Uh, and I, 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 it depends where you see yourself. And obviously Blackpool, similar size club to us really, but the, they're going to be looking at a they're going to be looking at a different challenge. And is that what he wants, or does he want to um, build something a little bit? And he has got more or less a blank canvas really because he can he can take who he wants he can get rid of who he wants and yeah there's going to be that we know we've got to get rid of players and we've got to do that kind of thing um but there's enough there there's 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 enough there to i mean we sell a sell a couple of players and and there's enough there to bring in some decent quality players he's not he's not going to be working on the same um signings as he would be for Cheltenham with all due respect to them um we are a little bit more of a pull than them. And that, like I said, no disrespect to them. It's just the food chain. We've had this before. Yeah. If he does well with us, we're not we're not daft enough to know that somebody else is not going to come knocking. Do you know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. how football goes. I think what it I think what it is we such as like Duff, is like we said via it's like most of bank canvas. I think patience will be key. I think it's get get lad time for him to get his own personnel in. Um, he did say in press conferences he wanted to fetch a, a, another body in for the first team set up. Uh, so that'd be interesting. He's, he's got to stall what he wants to uh, set out, kind of thing. He's also took training on Monday. Um, probably seen it on sort of certain pictures on social media with Carlton Morris and that running and stuff. So just going on to the players, kind of thing. We, yeah, we got uh, Luca Connell last week. Uh, Patrick Schmidt left. So that's freed up wages for that. Uh, we've been linked with another player called Robbie Cundy. Again, a free, look, looking like a free transfer, a central defender. And apparently Duff knew about him when he was watching for Bath City and Cambridge. So, again, it's that knowledge of knowing the leagues and knowing the players where he's played against. But kind of going on to a uh, big transfer today for Barnsley is Carly Woodrow leaving club. I uh, spent four years with his Tom. Um I think it's fair to say he didn't have the best of season last season, but that's not expected uh, just him. It well, he could say that to a fair few players. But I think in, it's good business for Barnsley. Uh, he had one year left on his contract to turn 28. So at least we've got some kind of money, albeit undisclosed. He will probably want at highest earnings or reported to be one at highest earnings. So that's freed up the wages side as well. And... Were it a surprise that Corley had gone for you or were you half expecting it as long as we can keep Morris kind of thing, Tom? Uh, well, I'm smiling because it's amazing how these players like split the fan base, mm. uh, even with such good stats and with such good stuff going on. I was always one of those who got I got a bit of stick off people because I always said that for however many goals win all got, he should have got double that amount because he missed mm. some rounds. And yeah. I always... I did, I wasn't saying he were a poor player. I wasn't saying he were anything like that. But it was it was just an observation, and it, it, it's been really interesting to see what people have said about Woodrow. Um, and I think it's important not to have short memories, mm. because last season you named me somebody who wasn't having a poor season by their their standards. Yeah. We all them by um, mm. weren't many. There weren't many at all, um, and I just feel for Carly at Barnsley. After all the good stuff that he's done, I just feel like he's it's gone, for want of a better word, stale. It's gone. Mm. It, it's gone to the point where now, um, it's almost like he's at his peak and he's had that time. It, it just didn't feel. It just didn't feel good for him last year. It did. It, he, he, I didn't enjoy watching him last year mm. because he were he wasn't his natural self. He wasn't playing in his natural manner. Um, he was very, he looked agitated mm. more, more than he did enjoying it. Mm. Um, look at some of the early goals. I watched some of them today where they put them on the montage in the club. And uh, some of the early goals were instinct and um, confident, a confident player. Mm. Uh, and that's gone. That's gone at Barnsley now. Um, and, and that's why I think it's a great move for all, all parties, really, because I think Luton have got themselves a really good player. Mm. They can get him playing. Uh, for a decent fee, um, I think his time with us is up. Well, it obviously is, but I thought I thought that it was at the end of this season. Um, 
we've also freed up quite a big wage. Mm -hmm. Um, and whatever fee it is, do you know what? If we do, if I think because his time was up, whatever we've got's a bonus. Um, yeah. because that's that's my personal opinion. I know there'll be a lot of people who'll be saying, um, well, he's got he'll get these goals and he'd do this for us and he'll do that for that for us. I think as part of a rebuilding th that we're on, it's important that he moves on. Uh, yeah. it's, like, it's almost um, a symbolic transfer, this. Like yeah. a ch changing of the guard, even. Yeah, good, good. It's a good, yeah, some good, right, good points here, Tom, to be fair. Like you say, I think, I think time were right for all parties concerned. And like you say, I think it, by his own standards, he'd gone stale. It was frustrating. Um, I think, you know, you know captains say, and I said last season, I think Ian and captains say, I think it's affected him as bizarre, a player. Bizarre choice, such a bizarre yeah. choice. And he's been he's he's had a lot to put up with when he's played for us. He's 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 played under numerous managers. Hmm. Um some of them very good, some of them very poor. Um he's seen lots of different things. He played um as an attacking midfielder under Struber for yeah. a bit. Um so he's had lots of different things, and then he's made captain last year in a team that was that had no leadership. And he hmm. for all he is. He's a leader in terms of getting goals, but it it adds an extra layer of pressure to a team that needed a proper leader, like we said. Yeah. Uh, so I, I feel like he's. I feel like there's been a cert, there's been certain things that have transpired against him. Um, but in my opinion, my opinion, I'll always thank him for. Um, he just seems like a genuine bloke. He seems like a. Mm. It seems like uh, I mean my my Twitter page is a picture of me and him at Bristol Rovers. What a day that was! And <laughs> and he yeah. he he he, um, he was he, he were absolutely on fire then. Um, and I hope I really do hope um, I've got a lot of time for Luton because I think they're a yeah. I think they're a similar size club to us. They've done a great job in recent years to get from the, I mean the main conference and done all that. And I just hope it's like a good fit for him. And yeah. I hope. He, I hope he does does really well. He's one of those who's gone, and I really hope he does well. Yeah, good good, good comments there because I dropped on a club shop when he picked up his injury, and uh, he was chatting to the staff and stuff like that. And I just had a word with him. I said, "Are you open to get back for the season for the end of the season?" He said, "I'm open." He said, "I'm doing light training work and that." I said, "Can I have a selfie?" You know, picture. And yeah, yeah, no problem. So yeah. you know, even though all frustration and that, he's still a time out. He didn't shun me away out and. Uh, full respect for for him for like that, and I, I get where you're coming from. I think I think move to Luton because I think we'll be as a, as a youngster as well. We we'll start off as a youngster, so I think it's possibly a uh, right move for him. Uh, it seems happy, you know. He get a, a good statement to you know to fans kind of thing. Some people say yeah, but we always say that. But we, we blah 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 coming out with stuff. But I think we call it war. Um, you know, he could he could have probably left. Uh, earlier, if you know, sign a contract, same time as Mowit. But I think you know, one thing we can be assured of is we under Duff is that he's wanted to play two strikers up top. So I think we call it going, whatever fee it is. But I'm looking at the wages side as well. That's a big chunk saved. Yeah, Duff has probably got something lined up. I mean, things seem to be happening pretty quick. Uh, you know, last couple of well, last week, we put a few players coming, a few players going, and I think now, and I did say to it earlier on. I think next week or two we will see a fair amount of comings and goings, and more or less the the team or the uh, the setup that Michael Duff wants as a, a manager. Because, like I said, he said it earlier, it's more or less like a blank canvas is in regard to players he wants. I do feel as though um, I do feel as though that um, as fans we've got to really think about we, it, there's going to be a lot of comings in and there's going to be a lot of goings. Hmm. Uh, whether the release players or the whatever it is, there's some gone already. Um, there's going to be a lot of so for us to. I'll just. I'll, what about this one, Tom? Because this is an interesting one as well. Uh, Carlton Palmer and Ads Bejo, they both still on time of contracts. Are you surprised with that? Cal Carlton Palmer, we got Carlton. Have we? Uh, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's been that many players. I've been looking at and everything like that. Romal Palmer, sorry, so there's been what, that many we, players and stuff like that. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I think um, yeah, Palmer and Adebayo mm. for me, I, I, I've, I have it's very, very often, very rare that I, I get as a, agitated with a player as I, I as much as I did with Palmer last year because I thought mm. he was playing. He looked like um, 
he looked like a shell of a player, but he also looked like a player who um, didn't. <laughs> He didn't want to be there. He didn't look like he wanted to be there. He didn't look like he looked like when the going got tough. He was one who would he, he didn't he didn't want to he didn't want to dig in. And do you know what? I do think as well that he's um he, he's quite limit. He's quite a limited footballer. Now it's a bit different with Adebayo because I think he is a very 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 limited footballer who gives his all, who has done a really really good job to get to where he is. Mm. Um, so I've got a bit, little bit of a different view on him because I feel like he's the kind of player who deserves a lot of credit for playing so many games in the Championship with limited ability. I'll, I'll liken him to, um, and, and they're completely the, the the different players. They're not the same. But Ode, um, when Coyote Odije used to play for us, mm. it wasn't his fault that he was playing in the Championship. Somebody decided to recruit him. Yeah, yeah. Done so well to get to there with the ability that he got. So a fair play to him. But for me, if you're moving forward, Palmer and Adebayejo, you, you move on. Let them go and you move on. Because I don't I don't think they I think they're part of again what happened last season and aren't good enough to keep hold of or make a beeline to keep hold of. Um because I don't think they're gonna be I don't think they're gonna make it make us better. I really yeah. don't. Yeah. I really don't. I was thinking of Carlton Morris then for some reason because oh. I, I just got a picture here with him in training, uh, Carlton Morris in training. And it was nice to see, you know, Mads Anderson were training as well. Um, and Michael Duff, we were talking to Callum Britton. So again, it was great to see certain players in. Who I thought, do you know what? Mm, if they're in training, I'm not really saying it's a given, but part of plans kind of thing. Yeah. So, do, you know what, do you know what I think might keep Carlton Morris here? And this mm -hmm. is going to sound bizarre. Um, I think his his injury record might keep him here. Uh, and and, and yeah. I, don't, I don't mean that. I'm not saying that he's going to have injuries for the rest of his career. But he's had niggling injuries mm. quite a lot of the time. He's had he's had um, stuff where he's had niggling injuries that have kept him out three, four games, and and this and it might be that that's what keeps him here because you don't know whether a team's going to take. Um, they might see it as a risk. Yeah. Uh, and and again, I don't know what he's. I'm just looking at his injuries that he's had um, since he's been with us. He's had a lot of niggling injuries, a lot of little things like that. Um, I think he's a fantastic player and somebody we really would, um, we really should be looking to kind of get be an integral part of if we can. Um, but yeah, I think that might be something that might it might keep him here. Um, and somebody said, I think it might have been. On here, actually, it might have been um, a comment on here, but somebody said that it might be like the last couple of days of the transfer window where we lose these players. Yeah, because that's when you that's when your your panicking comes in and they think, oh, we're going to sign this, we're going to sign that. So we we're going to have to be a little bit um, wary of that as fans. So if you think you've got, for example, I don't know, a Styles or a Helic or whatever, mm. with three days left, don't be surprised to see them <laughs> swooped away. And and you know what? I'm absolutely certain Duff will have a contingency for that as well, and he'll yeah. he'll, he'll probably have these players in or players in who he would hope um, would. I mean, you look at like you look at the players that we that we're linked with. On about um, Kunde from um, Bristol City, yeah. Looking at stuff like that, um, and do you know what? It's quite difficult now because uh, you'll get lots of fans who will say, "Oh, oh yeah, I know about Kunde. He's a great player." This and a lot of people want to see him play. A yeah. lot of people were seeing Alfie May play, and they'll all be saying, "Oh, let's have May, let's have May," and they'll just see stats. But actually, I, I, I'll be completely honest with you. Kundi played against us this year, um, at home, and I can't remember him. Um, yeah. I've only seen him that one time, so yeah. I can't comment. But from the from the comments that have come from other people, it sounds promising, um, and that's where his knowledge comes in as well. Because if you look at all the loans he's had, he's had loans at lower league teams. Um, and Duffel obviously has seen him play in those and he'll have seen those things. So I, I've got more confidence in his bringing in players yeah. now than I've ever had because I know that the players that have been signed will be players who are not just shoehorned in. They'll be part of a plan. And I, I, said, that, I said that before, didn't I? I think if, as long, if they're part of a plan, okay, 
they could be part of a plan for, I don't know, they're a backup in case this happens, in case that happens. Are they going to be our number nine? No, they're not going to be our number nine, but they're going to be somebody we, we might have for, if, I don't know, it could be third choice, fourth choice, fifth choice, anything like that. They've got, mm. they, I know from, from listening to him that he's going to have a plan. Yeah. I think this will be a good one to try and tidy it off and like now all about transfers and that and <clears throat> obviously there's, there's going to be some more comings and goings uh, or what will be, you know, it could be up for debate, people what's watching, leave your comments below. But in um, this is just your opinion now. Uh, would, if if Robbie uh, Kundi does come in and centre back, obviously people put two and two together and come up and say, well, that means Alex going, so it's going to be a replacement to this over. Well. But as a as a fan, and you had a you know you had choice for a manager's pick, what area would you be looking at next to get someone in to strengthen? Centre midfield. Yeah. Centre midfield. Yeah. All day long. Yeah. Um, it's your engine room. Hmm. It's your engine room. And when we lost Moet, we never replaced him. We never had anything, um, anything like that. Um, an enforcer. Yeah, um, I agree. Somebody who, um, and you know what, an enforcer, not necessarily needs to be a leader. You can have a leader from wherever, but I would love a leader and an enforcer. And some people will be shouting at screens and saying, oh, yeah, and where are you paying for that and what are you doing for that? There's a lot of players who are out of contract. There's a lot mm. of players who are going to be looking for clubs. There's a lot of players who, if you sell to them, that we've got Duff in charge and mm. we're looking at it and we're giving it a right go. We're going to go for it. Um I'd like you to captain the team. I'd like you to do that kind of stuff. That's where we need to be looking because we've got no, we had no heart of our team last year. Mm. We had no heart of the team. There was the, um, I, I'm not picking on Palmer, but 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 Palmer in your in, in your centre midfield in the championship is it is it, it, just not. It's not going to cut it. It's not going to mm. going to do it. And. Um, I, ju I just think that's a that's a place that never got filled, particularly after Mowat left. But uh, and we've had we've had players like like Matty James and players like that, and and they're the kind of players. That's the kind of player or that style of player that we we really need. He'll know that. He'll yeah. know. That. Um, and he'll have he'll he'll have earmarked probably four, five, six of them. Um, and and we'll have to see, but um, definitely centre midfield. Good, yeah, Matt. I was, I was going to say centre midfield because we need that kind of presence in midfield to organise, get it structured. And, you know, and like I said, I think Duff will, uh, you'd like to afford to re it, whether it's right time at minute to fetch someone in or it's still looking, you know. And like I said, sell, sell, sell club. And, you know, it's an attractive option. You know, it's going to be, there's going to be a project to go forward, and I think if if you if you buy into that, I think it'll just go straight through the team, and it's like more or less spying your team kind of thing. So, yep, yeah, uh, people, what's uh, watching? Leave your comments below. Do you do you agree? Do you think it's a midfielder we need? Do you think it's going to be someone to replace Woodrow? I think uh, eventually that will come, but I think me as a priority like now, nah, I'd like to see someone in midfield, and it's like you know if you can keep Morris. Like yeah. what Tom said, yeah, a, lot, I think a, lot will a lot will depend on his style that he wants to play as well. Because mm. um, mm. it's all right me saying, oh, well, he needs this and he needs that. But it'll, the, like I said, I'm confident that the players it'll sign will be the ones that he'll want to fit into his system mm. um, and, and where he wants them to play. So I think a lot will depend on the way that he wants to play. So we'll, that that remains to be seen as well, you see. So Yeah, he has said uh, he, he likes to play three at back. And he loves to up front. So out in midfield, it could be a five. It could be one just behind strikers. It could be out. And it is say uh, he's not going to be afraid to mix and match it when it needs to be long ball or short or whatever. It says, but that's again now, five, five substitute rule as well. You need you need a big bench, you know. Do you reckon we'll bring in someone we're long for O'Neill? We've got Jasper Moore, haven't we? Well, <laughs> we've we've had a few who've had um we've had a few who've had a, a short long throw. Short so long throw. So, so we had Frazier trying to throw it in, and it, yeah, true. It, it looked yeah. like it was going to go in box, and it never did. Um, but the um, I know that they do, I know that at Cheltenham they've done that um, with, with good effect for, for for quite a while. So that that, that would be um, be good. interesting to watch on set pieces, wouldn't it? Like you've said, yeah, you know, well, a throw could be as good as a corner. Yeah. Well, do you know what League One though? There's so many. There is there is so many goals to be had from mm -hmm. set 
because there's so many and sharp play and clever play um the the, the set pieces and you know what you can the, it, on the flip side of that, if you don't get your set pieces right, you see a lot of these teams struggling. If they they've conceded so many goals at set pieces and they've they've done this and done that, I think he will be. Um, I think he'll be on that. I think yeah. he'll. So it's it's all looking it's all looking positive, and there's going to be stuff where people say, "Oh, not sure about that, not sure about this." Hmm. And there's going to be bits where people are going to be maybe questioning things and, and looking back and like there is with Woodrow, you only have to look at Woodrow, he's one of his top scorers of all time and look at how he split the fan base and on, on, yeah. on how he's left now. There's going to be people going to say, what's this, what's that? I think we've got to stick with it. We've got to stick with it. Mm -hmm. We've got to be patient. We've got to make sure that we, um, we, we support, I'm sure support this season will be brilliant. I really do think it'd be good. And, and I can't, I can't wait, but we've got to be patient with it and we've got to let stuff fall into place, just relax a little bit and um, hopefully let the man do his job. Patience is key, Tom. Patience is key. That's it. Agree. I want to thank everybody for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. Tom, thanks again for being on. Uh, some excellent comments you've raised up there, mate, and uh, on a broad variety of things from Duff to players and Woodrow leaving. So, Tom, appreciate you being on, mate. Cheers, mate. One thing left to say, you Reds.